All right, so let's take a look at our documentation here. I do all my writing in Google Docs because it's just so easy. I format things just out of habit, but you can write this stuff down any way that makes sense to you. And you really don't need to write it down. Uh, as I mentioned before, the process of writing stuff down really helps you uh, make sure you have a good methodology to make sure the research you do actually makes sense. So what I basically do is here's a, just a little overview of what I'm doing, a quick link to my data sheets, and then I have my hypotheses here. So I talked about that in the previous video. Um, then I go into methods and, and uh, uh, methods is where you're going to realize there's lots of things to work out. Uh, this uh, means like calculating your seeding rates, how you're going to do it, you know, how deep your soil is going to be, how you're going to separate the different seeding rates. So I break that down here and I won't go into the methods in detail here because you'll get to see it when I, when I get going. Then I kind of went through what I'm going to evaluate. So some of this is going to be just looking and you're going to see what is better and what is worse. Uh, and in some cases, that's going to be fine for our first evaluation, which we'll do right after uh, the germination stage. When we uncover crops, we will uh, do a qualitative assessment just by looking at stem length and germination rate, anything like that. Uh, we will do a measurement of height and then we will take some photos. And I love photo documenting because photos really do uh, really cover a lot. A photo is really worth a thousand words. And our second evaluation, which would be at harvest time, we're going to do a height measurement again. Then we're going to do the harvest weight and then we'll take some more photos. So these final uh, height and weight we can use, as I talked about earlier, we can correlate that to our sowing rate and we can actually correlate it to our, our, our initial height when we uncover during germination. So we can just see what different relationships look like through the process. I did some calculations here to determine uh, what my sowing, different sowing rates would be. Uh, because I'm using cell packs within a 1020 tray and the cell packs have edges, I had to account for that and that's accounted for in my sowing rates. We'll take a look at that in the um, data sheets. And then just a, a mention here about how I'm going to weight things down and basically I'm going to weight each, each cell pack down by putting another cell pack full of soil and well watered on top of that. So let's take a look at the data sheet here. So the data sheet is where I'm going to basically record my information. So I just basically have, uh, I, I like to make things collapsible. I just have an overview of what we're doing here and then a quick link to the document we were just looking at. And then for both of my crops, I have my starting date here, I have the crop, and then I'm doing two repetitions of each, which means I'm doing each sowing rate twice. This is really important in experimental design so we can kind of rule out, uh, you know, one thing being in a warmer spot or getting a little bit more light, things like that. This category here is what my sowing rate per tray would be. And then I've done a calculation so we could see what that uh, translates to into a cell pack. And we're gonna have 12 cell packs per 1020 tray. So this is basically uh, the 1020 value divided by 12. And then it's actually only uh, at about 85% of that sowing rate because of the edges I talked about earlier. My uh, sort of known uh, ideal sowing rate is here in the middle at 125 and every other sowing rate below is just a, a declines in 10% increments and then the ones above increase in 10% increments. So I have the same for both wheatgrass and sunflower here. And so I, I'll use this to, to make my sowing easier and then uh, we'll talk more about what that's gonna look like uh, as we get into that and you can watch that in real time. And then I'm gonna record my data here, my height during uh, for my first evaluation my height at my second evaluation, and then my weight at my second evaluation, and then I'll do some of the ratios here. Um, once I do my sewing, uh, everything is in order here, but once I put this, this, everything into a tray, and this sort of represents a tray right here, uh, I'm gonna make a map. And the reason I'm gonna do that is because each of my cell packs is labeled, but in case one of those labels uh, falls off, or uh, it, it runs because it gets wet and I can't read it, I'll have a map to refer to. And that's because I'm gonna randomize where I put each of the um, cell packs in here so we don't have a specific pattern of, of, of heavy seeded in on one end and light seeded on the other. And that's gonna work for both crops uh, in doing that map. So that's just a quick overview of the 
of my uh, design, experimental design and data collection. You can take a look at this in a little more detail uh, with the links I'm going to provide. You cannot edit these, but you can leave comments if you have any questions. So now let's take a look at uh, getting set up for our experiments.